keeps his audience informed through his monthly newsletter, The HS Dent Forecast. In his latest 2011 book, The Great Crash Ahead, he outlines why government stimulus is doomed to failure and the economic havoc that lies ahead. And he uh, joins us. He graduated from the University of South Carolina and earned his MBA from Harvard Business School, where he was a Baker Scholar. Okay, uh, we're going to go to him now. Thank you for holding while I was ranting about what's happened with the storms. And FEMA is angry at the power companies. They say, get it back on uh, or you're in trouble. Uh, but I mean, FEMA is totally incompetent. Look at what happened with Katrina. Do you have any comments on the current state of things before we get into your larger worldview of what's coming? Well, you know, I mean, it, there's cycles in everything. There's cycles in like solar activity and stuff, and that's tending to affect things uh, on the grid now. So, I mean, you know, anything you can study in cycles, and the most important thing is to understand what drives those cycles. When do they come and go? But more importantly, in the economy, we look at uh, demographic trends, predictable things people do as they age, drive almost all the key cycles over time in our economy. So anybody can understand it, and economists really don't have a clue. What, tell us about yourself, because I've, uh, you know, read one of your books, I've read the excerpts that you did indeed, you know, make, in some cases, decades before things did unfold. How were you able to look off into the future uh, and uh, basically develop uh, your system of uh, research and, and forecasting? Well, you know, first, Alex, I, I wasn't trained as an economist. I was a business consultant coming out of Harvard Business School, working with Bain and Company, consulting the Fortune 100 companies on strategic change. How are their markets and, and industries changing? Where do they need to go? And I did the same thing with new ventures on the more innovative side. So I've seen the economy from a real world point of view. And out of that experience, I developed some simple tools for predicting the macro economy, not just one industry or one consumer product, but what do people do in general as they age? How do they create inflation? How do they spend money? Uh, how do they raise their families? How do they invest money? When do they retire? All these things. And when you look at that, especially with new generations and especially a generation the size of the baby boom, which is unprecedented in size as a generation, the baby boom is driven a boom from 1983 to 2007. It's just a 46-year lag on the birth index for the peak in spending. It's that simple. And now they're going to be spending less, uh, paying down borrowing and buying less houses. So the government stimulus doesn't have a chance of working and they're only racking up more debt after the greatest debt bubble in history. But I look at the United Nations and Goldman Sachs and others, they talk about a post-industrial nation and how they wanna have less population, but they know full well that a boom in population actually generally in history creates a boom in the economy over time. Now the baby boomers are getting ready to retire. So right on time, the banksters are making sure that everything implodes. So whatever's paid back is paid back in inflated dollars. What do you expect to see in the future? You've accurately predicted these trends. What's happening in Europe? What's happening here? Uh, a lot of metrics say we're already in a depression. But they claim we were out of a recession three years ago and that pigs fly. Uh, what do you see coming in the future? Well, first of all, Japan proves this point that slowing population and aging is not good for the economy. You need young people to innovate when they're young, enter the workforce, raise families, work hard, earn money, and they're the ones that support the older people anyway. Japan, baby boom peaked just before and right after World War II, a decade or more ahead of Europe and the United States, and guess what? Their economy started to tank. They had their real estate bubble, their stock bubble, everything we've seen a decade or so ahead of us, and now we're going into the same thing. So Japan proves if you don't have more young people, if people don't have kids and raise kids, or if you don't encourage uh, qualified immigrants, it's hard to continue to grow because older people slow down and young people rev up. So Japan is already in a long-term downturn. All the stimulus in the world has not turned around their economy. It's eased the pain, but it has not turned around the economy. Europe is now the next. Southern Europe is the next fastest aging. And then East Europe and Russia. And then the U.S. And ultimately, even China is going to age faster than the U.S. coming ahead. And the, and the world ahead is going to boom largely in the emerging countries from Southeast Asia and India around the world. But, but 
all developed countries, as we've gotten richer and more urban, we have less kids. And then kids on a 46-year lag tell you where the economy's going. And most economies are going sideways at best in America and down in places like Southern Europe and Japan. And here in the United States, there are really, I guess, three different types of people. There are folks that are willing to work three or four jobs to live a middle-class life or to you know, try to survive and not go on welfare. There are you know, kind of the nouveau riche types that want to sit around lazy and don't want to you know, work. Uh, and then I guess you've got kind of the whole bureaucratic class. Uh, and I guess you got the welfare class too. I mean, there's more than three grips. The point is there's less and less people that are willing to work and the government and the bureaucrats and the welfare people look at us with hate. They talk bad about us all day. They say we're trash, we're filth. Uh, there's never enough money we can pay them. So what's going to happen is it all collapses uh, and there's not enough of us to, you know, to, to uh, uh, pay for armored vehicles on every corner or drones to watch us because the government wants to keep their milk cows behaving. Well, you know, basically it takes crisis for people to get reality. And we're not there yet. We started in 2008, but the government bailed us out of all of that and stimulated out. Um, we've had debt growing almost three times the rate of our economy since the early 1980s. We've had constant government deficits since the early 1970s, constant trade deficits. We and most other countries in Europe, especially Southern Europe, have been living off of debt, not just our own natural uh, work habits and increase in productivity and GDP. We've been living off debt. So this downturn will bring reality and people start to realize that the entitlement systems we have are not even remotely affordable decades in the future. Young people have no chance of getting the benefits that older people have gotten, and even older people will get less. Our, our support systems for people who don't work are going to have to come into some question. I mean, you need some safety net, but not an endless safety net. So I think you're getting a big reality crisis in the next Well, I agree years, with you, but I mean, what about... Years. What about, but I mean, look, the social engineers know this. I mean, they uh, they put out one type of economic forecast for the for the slaves, for the cattle as they see us. But I mean, they just said they're going to euthanize all the old people. That's how they're going to pay for it. Uh, I mean, their answer is just just shrink the economy and uh, instead of uh, trying to build it up. Well, I mean, you know, one reality in healthcare is is anywhere between thirty three and fifty percent of the cost or in the last year of life. So we're gonna to have to come to grips with that. You can't publicly pay for that. People privately can pay to extend their lives for six or 12 months, but you can't pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. So healthcare needs a major, and I mean a major restructuring, but it, yeah, it doesn't mean euthanizing people. And um, the, the truth is you just, we have too much debt accumulated over decades. We need to restructure private debt, 42 trillion, Public debt is 16 trillion and rising in the U.S. and then off the charts in parts of Europe. And then we have these unfunded entitlements for Social Security and health care that are like 66 to 82 trillion dollars right. by two different. Harry, parts. Harry Dan, amazing. Sustainable. I want to come back and talk to you about what will the collapse look like. We know we're in the beginnings of it now, but how bad is it going to get? Hi, this is Alex. The story's out from the Washington Times. Drone industry releases ethics code. Oh, yeah, all over the world, killing entire families or entire villages to kill, quote, one terrorist. So that, and now they're pressing Congress to allow more weaponized drones to other countries to start a drone race. And they want 30,000 armed drones here in the U.S. I mean, what a joke, taking our money, military industrial complex feeding on us. Best selling author Harry S. Dent joins us, author of The Great Crash Ahead. And it is uh, certainly beginning to unfold. Uh, today, look, I see governments and their white papers and admissions getting in a very aggressive uh, acclamation and and uh, posture towards the population. S standard unified program worldwide. Uh, I see them going for more taxes, which they know shut down economies. What do you expect to happen? from your you know, very well-researched and accurate predictions. How will this collapse look? How far along are we into it? Uh, is there any way out of it? Then we're going to go to break. I want to come back and find out what you would do individually. Go ahead. Well, you know, there is no easy way out of it. They've been taking the easy way thus far. You know, QE1 and QE2 and Operation Twist and Shout and all this sort of stuff. 
This is just short-term stimulus to avoid dealing with the massive debt and bubbles that we, that we created. And the government did a lot to help create those bubbles. So did the private sector. Everybody did, in a sense. But you have to get out of the bubble to recover from this. You have to restructure debt. You have to let the economy slow down. You have to let businesses get more efficient. So it's a natural free market process that they are preventing by just keeping the economy stimulated. They're keeping the bubble going. The government puts money in the banking system. The banks turn around and reinvest that money, since they're not lending it to businesses and people, into their, the government bonds to keep their interest rates low so they can keep borrowing and running deficits. It's not a sustainable situation. It's very very irresponsible. We created the first crisis in 2008 in the U.S. with our subprime lending crisis that started to blow up. Europe is now starting to blow up. Oh, they just had this big breakthrough, uh, you know, last Friday about, oh, we're going to directly recapitalize banks from the ECB with free money and not put it on the governments. So that that won't even start to take a, a, a into account until late this year, number one. And number two, the short-term debt pressures are rising. They did this out of crisis. They didn't do this out of normal agreement. They did it out of a crisis that's building. I think Europe's getting ready to blow up and start to blow up like our subprime crisis did in late 2008 in the next two to four months. So I think you're going to see another at least mini stock crash, some problems in Europe. It's going to spill off in the United States and ultimately it hits China. So you're going to see this cascade of effects European crisis, U.S. slows down. We have a crisis. Our big crisis is still in real estate loans and banking loans, foreclosures piled up to the moon that are going to have to hit the market sooner or later. And then China has the biggest overbuilding, top-down government strategy for overstimulating an economy ever. And they're going to bust as their exports are cratering. So I, I think we have a world crisis developing over the next two, two and a half years, and it's going to start this summer again, and it's just going to cascade, you know, late, I think the most dangerous time for investors and businesses, second half of this year, and the second half of 2013, and again, mid to late 2014, before we shake out all this debt, get down to reality about our entitlements and everything else, and, and, and get to a position where we can grow again. You cannot grow with all this debt in our economy, in Europe or in the United States or anywhere. It's like trying to run again with a 300 pound weight on your back. You have to deleverage the debt. The free market systems did this rapidly in the early 1930s. And after three years, we came roaring out of the Great Depression. Iceland already was forced to confront their debt and restructure it. And now they're booming while the rest of Europe is sinking. So it's better to let free market systems with some government assistance, deal with this. Don't try to put it off. Government is just putting off the inevitable and making it worse by adding more debt to debt. You can't solve a debt crisis with more debt. It's that simple. But look, uh, I mean, you're a smart guy. You're saying, you're saying, oh, it's not going to work. Well, it's going to work giving trillions in bailout money to the bankers and wrecking the rest of the economy. So they're the last ones standing. I mean, what about all their documents? If you haven't seen them, I can send them to you, where they talk about a post-industrial world. Uh, it's Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan funding all this global government business. I mean, they plan on using this implosion as their takeover. Well, yeah, I mean, the bubble gave banks more power and all this sort of stuff. That's why they don't want the bubble. You've got the governments and the banks kind of colluding to keep this thing going. The point is, the more you stretch the system with all this stimulus,